In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at this action-packed weather pattern that we're in right now. So we'll take a look at this current conditions, and then we're going to dive into the upcoming pattern. I will say there is a whole lot more cold to see on the upcoming pattern and also a whole lot more snowfall. Things are looking more wintry than any model run we've seen so far this fall. I don't want to hype it up too much, but this is going to be an exciting video for anybody that enjoys cold or snowy weather uh, because it looks a lot more wintry than, again, what we've seen in any model run so far uh, this season. Now, there is also a whole lot going on here on the current conditions, as you can see. Storm system in the northwest here uh, for Washington and Oregon. We have some stuff going on down here for the southern Rockies into the southwest. We have a storm system up there north in south central Canada. Uh, this is impacting the north central United States. And then for the East Coast and the Southeast, including the Gulf states as well, we have plenty of storminess along the Eastern Seaboard heading up just like this as well. So there's a whole lot to talk about here. We're just going to fly through it though because I do want to get into the model guidance. There's a whole lot to talk about there. We have very, very heavy snowfall taking place in the Cascades. So for Washington and Oregon, the Cascades here, we see the whites and even the blues popping up. The blues especially here are going to be very, very heavy snowfall, so keep that in mind uh, for areas like Washington and Oregon. Uh, definitely want to watch out for that. Uh, obviously, if you're there, you can probably notice that there's very heavy snowfall happening. Whiteout conditions, I would say, for sure. Lower elevations here are dealing with moderate to heavy rainfall as well, so definitely impactful regardless. Uh, we see that there is some showery activity, snowfall and rainfall, that is, depending on, again, elevation for Nevada, Utah, in through southern Wyoming and northern Colorado there. And even here into northeastern Colorado, into central Nebraska, we have some rainfall showers taking place. Now, as we head up to the north central United States, we can see a very strong low up here near Winnipeg. And this is creating some snowfall and rainfall showers heading southward through North Dakota and Minnesota here. Uh, definitely interesting uh, to see this happening in here, uh, especially since we have the snowfall happening in the Northwest and the Rockies, so different systems creating a lot of different snowfall here, uh, but pretty heavy in here. We can see the bright whites popping up, again, indicating very heavy snowfall, actually. And then for the Gulf states, uh, trying to pick up on the flow of things, we have uh, pretty decent little thunderstorms, tropical thunderstorms, I would say, heading onshore to Texas and Louisiana, even far north into some of these Gulf states like Mississippi and Alabama there. For Florida, it's a stormy day, not a huge, you know, abnormality there. Uh, we do see plenty of these isolated and scattered thunderstorms heading onshore. Florida is one of my favorite states. Me and my uh, girlfriend just visited Florida, I would say it was September, and yes, it does storm almost every evening, especially that time of year. So uh, thunderstorms aren't a huge <clears throat> Again, abnormality for Florida. I absolutely love it there. It is very hot, though. If you live there, you know. If you've been there, you know. Extremely hot. Uh, we can see that there is also some of these thunderstorms heading on toward Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. With this uh, warm, humid air, this is going to be one of the last. Today and tomorrow are going to be the last warm, humid days for the East Coast here. We've been in a very warm and humid pattern, so that's why we've been seeing that weather. We could still see the northern flow taking place for a lot of these states here in the Mid-Atlantic and the Ohio Valley there. All the way up through New England, we still have a northern flow. Very, very interesting there. More like showers the further north you go. We can tell there's a frontal boundary here. This is creating some storminess with it, but I think this is going to be the main one that brings some colder weather in. And then later on in the pattern, we're going to see even colder weather. So it's just going to keep getting colder and colder and colder. So what we're going to do is move on and take a look at that exciting model run that I can't wait to show you guys. Now here we are taking a look at the upcoming storminess. We'll actually just move this towards tomorrow afternoon so we can get towards you know some upcoming weather instead of what's happening right now. We do have plenty of more widespread snowfall happening across the northwest and some of the northern Rockies as well. So as you can see, stretching across this region I've just drawn here, all the way down to the Sierra Nevadas actually as well, with some of that snowfall taking place, definitely quite a bit of activity and also some lighter showery and maybe perhaps thunderstormy activity down there for the deeper south. That's Monday the 7th. Let's look at Tuesday the 8th. I can't even believe we're moving this far in November. Am I just getting old? Because I always remember older people saying that time moves quicker. I might just be getting old. I don't know. 
I don't know what's happening, but time is moving very, very quickly. Uh, we do have some more snowfall still happening out west by Tuesday the 8th. We do have this system here that we're watching that is something between a nor'easter and a tropical system that we have to watch. It's definitely worth noting there. And even as we approach Wednesday, uh, you can see this draws closer to Florida, perhaps. Definitely something to watch, like I said. Uh, some heavier snowfall still happening out west. We'll take a look at the total snowfall in just a little bit. Uh, even Thursday here would be when this storm is kind of landfalling. Is the 980 millibar low pressure center, is, according to the GFS model, very interesting. Uh, we do have a 992 millibar, very strong storm here in central United States as well, bringing ice in between for those pink and orange regions. Uh, snowfall, perhaps heavy in spots there in the deeper uh, blue regions, Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, the Dakotas. And then we have some storminess, some rainfall there on the eastern end in the green. So a full palette of precipitation types here happening on Thursday the 10th here across the north central United States. Very interesting weather. We can see just to, just to uh, kind of uh, recap here, this system kind of moves like this, and then it's going to kind of just stretch along the inland regions of the East Coast and bring impacts to these states as well. Still a major snowfall event here for Friday the 11th for the north central United States there. We can see this coastal storm just moving up the coast, bringing heavy, heavy rainfall, probably some windiness. This is by Saturday the 12th. Here we're getting a little bit... Uh, uh, further into the model run here, so take it with a grain of salt, but this is still within reasonable time time frame here, I would say. And that storm kind of just moves up innocently. But this is right around when we see this cold air that's all bottled up up here try to move further south and further east. So we're going to see this spread eastward, uh, and definitely some interesting snowfall happening. Again, location and timing, not important. We've talked about this time and time again. The more important thing is that when we see this cold air move in, multiple snowfall opportunities will kind of come with it. So we see maybe some northeast snowfall, maybe some Ohio Valley snowfall, maybe some mid-Atlantic snowfall. Maybe it will be for the upper Midwest. It's very hard to say exactly where that location would be. But it is, it is in fact, important to note that there will possibly be snowfall for some places, uh, regardless of where, uh, but in the eastern half of the nation at least. Uh, here for the interior eastern and in, in mostly northeastern United States here for Sunday the 20th, we're still seeing some of that snowfall and probably the coldest air of the season here as we have a really decent ridge here taking place in, in the west here, positive PNA, and then we have this colder temperatures moving into the east. Very, very interesting weather. Now, total precipitation through the next 15 days here. Your whites will be practically no precipitation. Your grays will be about a tenth of an inch or less of precipitation. Your greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues, half an inch to an inch. Your yellows, an inch to two inches. Your reds, two to five inches. Your browns, five to ten inches of precipitation. And kind of flipping the tides here because for the past multiple weeks, the West Coast has seen the most precipitation. Uh, every single model run we've taken a look at and... Now they are expecting a lot. We can see that there's still reds and browns out there. But I would say the tides are flipping to where the east coast probably has the most precipitation over the next 15 days as opposed to the west coast. Really showing you how this activity has fully flipped as we get later into this model run. We see the reds for the entire eastern seaboard uh, and then further inland areas as well and then even for the upper midwest. So a lot of storminess on the way over the next 15 days and also a lot of colder air. Total snowfall through the next 15 days, no surprise. We get some very surprising southern areas uh, seeing snowfall. So that was kind of a confusing sentence I said there. I, I do realize that. I said kind of, you know, not a big surprise that there is some surprising snowfall. I don't know if that exactly contradicts itself. I think we already saw that there was going to be some surprising snowfall happening. So it is no longer a surprise. I guess that's what I meant there. Uh, but anywhere in the grays, we're expecting a dusting, if anything. Blues, 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purples, 6 to 10 inches. Pinks, 10 to 20 there. And then your pastel blues, which we see some of that for the Dakotas and some of that for Minnesota as well. Uh, even the lake regions of New York, Pennsylvania, and Ohio, potentially some lake effect snowfall on the way. But still for the Northern Rockies, still for the Cascades, and still for the Sierra Nevadas as well. That's where 20 to 30 or even 30 to 40 inches plus can be expected over the next 15 days. Surely, a lot of snowfall is on the way as we approach ever so closely to winter. Uh, it's going to be interesting riding through this with you guys for sure. For the temperature pattern, for now we're in a negative PNA. Uh, so we have this cold air out west forcing the warm air around it here, as you can see. And this is what we've been kind of locked into. This is why the weather's been so nice. As time rolls through, 
Uh, we can see some cooler weather along the coast, so more neutral or below normal, depending on where you're at here for around Thursday the 10th. So we are seeing some, you know, cooler weather. But as time moves on, we see that first cold blast come through. This is going to fully engulf the eastern United States, the 12th into the 13th, which will be Saturday to Sunday. So we are seeing some of that taking place already by that point. As we continue things further forward, we can see it just kind of stays this way. Uh, things do become more neutral for the East Coast, but we are seeing cold, colder temperatures for the Central uh, and most of the Eastern United States. But it's this time frame where things kind of get reinforced. So uh, as you can see around the 18th here, 17th, 18th time frame, which will be Thursday to Friday, we get another cold blast come through bringing these greens to the Eastern United States. This is going to be 10 to 15 degrees below whatever your average temperature is for this time of year. And then look at this, though. We have even further below normal temperatures blasting in, and those really set in for the eastern United States here. Okay, so we're still seeing the greens for a lot of folks, which is 10 to 15 degrees below normal, like I just said. But these blues within the greens, kind of more of a purplish tint to them, I've always said, 15 to 25 degrees below normal. And we even see magentas here across the Ohio Valley and some surrounding states. And those magentas are going to be your 25 to 35 degree below normal temperatures, certainly a very far departure from what's typical uh, and definitely proves the point that the coldest air of the season could be on the way. Take it with a grain of salt, it is far out, but I certainly see and I've noticed that the Climate Prediction Center also sees very, very cold temperatures on the way for the rest of November. It's going to kind of take gradual steps. So we see this first cool down that's pretty far below normal, but then we see a in more intense one that again brings the greens into the eastern United States. And then we see a third one that brings us three steps down where we see very, very far below normal temperatures, probably more, much more like January rather than November with this third one, if it does take place. Very, very interesting stuff. Be sure to subscribe as we will track this every single day. We will be tracking the upcoming pattern. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts, and I will see you guys in the next video.